In a world grappling with persistent challenges of inequality, housing crisis and environmental woes, there emerges a beacon of transformative economic thought. The philosophy of Georgism. Today I want to take you on a journey through the life, ideas and lasting impact of the visionary economist Henry George. As I attempt to peel back the layers of Henry George's philosophy, Georgism will explore its radical departure from mainstream economics, challenge the flaws in our current systems, and envision a future where economic prosperity and societal well-being dance in harmony. From the bustling streets of 19th century New York to the present day, challenges of global housing affordability crisis and environmental sustainability, join me as I unveil the revolutionary philosophy that has the potential to reshape our economic landscape. Who is Henry George? Born on September 2, 1839 in Philadelphia, Henry George was raised in a working class family, providing him with a first-hand look at societal disparities. At the age of 16, he set sail for a seafaring adventure, gaining insights into global economic systems. In 1861, George married Australian Annie Cassina Fox, beginning a family that would eventually include four children. George's written works including Our Land and Land Policy in 1871, The Popular Progress and Poverty in 1879 and The Irish Land Question in 1881 established him as a leading economic thinker. His groundbreaking ideas and eloquent advocacy for social justice resonated widely, propelling him to the forefront of intellectual discourse. Tragically, George's health deteriorated after a series of strokes, culminating in his death on October 29, 1897, just days before he campaigned for the New York City Mayor. His passing marked the end of an era. An outpouring of public grief was profound. Over 100,000 people flocked to Grand Central Palace in New York, and the impact of his legacy reverberated far beyond his time, influencing figures like Franklin D. Roosevelt and Martin Luther King Jr. The procession then went on to Brooklyn, where the crowd at Brooklyn City Hall was the densest ever seen there. There were thousands on thousands at City Hall who were so far back they could not see the funeral procession pass. It was impossible to move on any of the nearby streets. The Times wrote, Rarely has such an enormous crowd turned out in Brooklyn on any occasion, but that nonetheless. Commentators also suggested it was the largest funeral in New York history, or the largest since the death of Abraham Lincoln. The New York Times reported not even Lincoln had a more glorious death. Even the not more conservative New York Sun wrote that since the Civil War, few announcements have been more startling than that of the sudden death of Henry George. So if Henry George was one of, if not the most influential economist of our time, why does nobody know who he is or any of his economic theories? This is what I can hopefully uncover for you today. But before we get into that, we need to understand the fundamentals of Henry George's work called Georgism. And I've broken it down into four key points. Number one, the essence of Georgism. Henry George's philosophy known as Georgism was a socio-economic framework founded on the principles outlined in his seminal work, Progress and Poverty in 1879. At the core of Georgism lies a distinctive perspective on land and its relationship with society. Number two, land value taxation. George argued for a single tax on the unimproved value of land, proposing that land is a common resource bestowed by nature. Taxing the value of land, which arises from factors like location and community development, was envisioned as a means to fund public services without burdening productive activities like taxing on business and personal income. Number three, wealth redistribution. A key tenet of Georgism involves redistribution of the economic rent generated from land back to the community by tapping into the unearned income derived from the inherent value of land george aimed to address the wealth disparities and uplift the broader populace number four 
incentive for development. Georgism discourages land speculation by eliminating taxes on labor and capital. Landowners would not face penalties for developing their properties, fostering economic growth and community improvement. George believed that the land value tax would alleviate poverty by boosting wages, stimulating employment, and curbing monopolistic tendencies associated with land ownership. And the philosophical foundations can be broken down into three parts. The first is a moral element. Georgism underscored a moral imperative, asserting that the benefits of land should be shared equitably rather than concentrated among a select few. The second is economic justice. George's philosophy aimed to harmonize economic efficiency with social justice, challenging the prevailing notion that unbridled private land ownership contributed to societal progress. And the third is common good. Georgism placed an emphasis on the concept of land as a communal asset, arguing that its value is a result of collective efforts and societal advancements. Why is Georgism not in mainstream economics? Let me take you back in time to help you understand this. As the echoes of the 19th century reverberated through economic discourse, a transformative figure emerged on the scene, Henry George. His economic philosophy, Georgism, stirred intellectual waters, promising a recalibration of societal wealth distribution. However, the tides of history would witness the gradual receding of Georgism from the mainstream. And this journey intertwines with the rise of Karl Marx's influential theories. In the latter part of the 1800s, Georgism found itself at the peak of intellectual curiosity. Henry George, through his seminal work, Progress and Poverty, articulated a vision that resonated globally. His proposition to shift the fiscal burden onto land values intrigued economists and activists alike prompting movements in support of this novel economic philosophy and framework. The late 19th century was a testing time for economic ideologies. While Georgism flourished, a parallel rise occurred. The ascent of Karl Marx's revolutionary theories, the lure of Marxist concepts infused with revolutionary zeal, seized the imagination of scholars and activists diverting attention away from George's nuanced approach. As the calendar flipped to the 20th century, the intellectual landscape of economics underwent a metamorphosis. Neoclassical principles gained dominance and the lure of Georgism waned. The focus on labor and capital overshadowed the once prominent consideration of land in its economic policies. The political landscape played a decisive role in shaping the destiny of Georgism. The rise of Marxist movements captured imaginations and headlines, relegating Georgism to the periphery. Economic policies reflecting the ideological shift began sidelining land-related considerations. Despite the marginalization, Georgism's legacy endures. The principles of capturing unearned land values and championing equitable economic structures remain relevant. Georgism, though no longer at the forefront, casts a long shadow on contemporary economic challenges. With a deliberate attempt to sideline Henry George's philosophy, Georgism, this has been documented in one of the most important books to date called The Corruption of Economics by Mason Gaffney and Fred Harrison, which explains how they sidelined Georgism and who the people were that actually achieved this. Other successful attempts to sideline George's theory was through a game called The Landlord's Game, which was later transformed into the popular household game called Monopoly. The origins trace back to a woman named Lizzie Maggie, who in 1904 created a board game to embody the economic philosophy of Henry George. The game aimed to illustrate the consequences of a monopolistic real estate system, mirroring George's critiques of wealth concentration through land ownership. Maggie ingeniously designed the game to showcase two contrasting paths. One, celebrating prosperity through sharing and collaboration, 
the other portraying the ruthlessness of monopolistic practices. Players face that mirrored societal decisions. Cooperation or exploration, fostering a nuanced understanding of economic systems. Central to the landlord's game was the concept of a single tax. Echoing Henry George's proposition, the game subtly advocated for a system where the economic burden rested primarily on land values. Through gameplay, Maggie sought to convey the societal impacts of adopting George's economic principles. While Lizzie Maggie's creation initially thrived as an educational tool, the winds of change took an unexpected turn. The game underwent a commercial transformation and in 1935 it re-emerged as Monopoly under the Parker brothers. The original intent to teach economic lessons became obscured under the veil of entertainment. Monopoly, a household name today, harbors a hidden narrative and that is to collect rent from their opponents to drive them into bankruptcy, which has formed the exact economic system we are in today. While sidelining the second economic theory that Lizzie Maggie had, first created in the landlord's game, whose was a testament to the enduring legacy of Henry George's ideas. The journey from the landlord's game to Monopoly mirrors the broader trajectory of Georgism. So how can Georgism solve the housing crisis? Australia and around the world is grappling with a formidable housing crisis, a complex issue exacerbated by a myriad of factors. A Georgist lens provides a unique insight into the root causes and suggests a departure from mainstream economic perspectives. Number one, rising house prices. The Australian housing market has witnessed soaring prices, making home ownership increasingly elusive for many. Georgism contends that such escalations are linked to the speculative value of land, emphasising the need to reevaluate the taxation system. Number two, land speculation and its consequences. Traditional economic models overlook the speculative nature of land. Speculation driven by expectations of future price increases distorts the housing market, contributing to affordability challenges. Number three, urban sprawl versus efficient land use. Georgism questions the efficiency of urban planning in the context of land use. With a tax system focused on the value of land, that's an inherent incentive for landowners to utilize their properties optimally, discouraging the withholding of land for speculative purposes. Number four, disconnect between land value and community investment. In mainstream economics, the connection between rising land values and community-driven investments is not adequately acknowledged. Georgism conversely proposes that the community's efforts and public investments enhance land values, justifying a fair return to the community. Number five, the taxation quandary. Conventional tax structures often focus on income and consumption might inadvertently contribute to the housing crisis. Georgism suggests that shifting the tax burden onto the unimproved value of land could deter speculative holding and encourage development. Number six, impact on housing affordability. Georgism posits that untangling the speculative elements from land prices could contribute to a more stable and affordable housing market by addressing the root cause, the taxation of land value. Georgism seeks to create a more equitable housing landscape. In essence, Georgism urges a reconsideration of the economic dynamics surrounding land, challenging mainstream models that might inadvertently perpetuate the housing crisis. So what is the solution? In the current tapestry of economic challenges, the housing crisis looms large, casting shadows on affordability, equity and societal well-being. Georgism is a philosophy echoing the sentiments of Henry George, poised to unravel the intricacies of housing and pave the way for a more sustainable society. Understanding the housing crisis. Australia, like many other nations, grapples with a housing crisis. Diminishing affordability and social inequalities underscore a system in need of reform. Conventional economic models entwined in complex theories 
often fall short in addressing the root causes, perpetuating a cycle of housing disparity. Georgism's bold proposition. Henry George's philosophy, encapsulated in Georgism, posits a radical yet elegant solution, the single tax. At its core, the tax targets the unearned income derived from land ownership, redirecting the economic burden away from productive activities. The idea is simple. Tax what society creates, the value of land, while leaving individual improvements untouched. Impact on housing. Georgism introduced a paradigm shift in housing dynamics. By taxing the unearned value of land, the speculative holding of prime real estate becomes economically unviable. This in turn stimulates efficient land use, discourages land hoarding, and fosters a more equitable distribution of resources. Sustainability in action. Beyond its implications for housing, Georgism echoes principles of sustainability by aligning economic incentives with responsible land use. It promotes environmental consciousness. Communities flourish as the single tax redirects focus from speculative gains to constructive endeavors transforming the urban landscape, empowering local communities. Georgism envisions a society where local communities reclaim economic agency. The single tax nurtures a fertile ground for community development where the benefits of shared resources manifest in an improved infrastructure, affordable housing and enhanced quality of life. As the housing crisis intensifies, Georgism stands as a compelling proposition, challenging traditional economic models. The philosophy of Henry George beckons us to rethink our approach, advocating for a more just and sustainable economic framework.